Hello guys, so let's start the session. Okay, so in this session, we will talk about multiple linear regression. So in this regression problem, we will have more than one features. So this is multiple linear regression. So multiple linear regression refers to a statical technique that is used to predict the outcome of a variable based on value of two or more variables. It means in this problem, we will have two or more than two variables or features, right? On the basis of such features, we can predict the output value. It is sometimes known simply as multiple regression, and it is an extension of simple linear regression. You can see this equation, y equal to b naught, or we can say constant term plus b1 x1. Here, b1 is the coefficient corresponding to x1 feature, Again, B2 is the coefficient corresponding to X2 feature till BI XI. If we have I features or if we have N features, right? So this will be the equation. So Y is the dependent variable. B0 is the intercept. BI, uh, we can say a slope of the XI feature and X equal to independent variable. So B1, B2 till BI, these are the coefficient. And B0 is a constant term. And x1, x2 till xi, these are the features, right, or input variables. Now, oh, we will understand this algorithm with the help of an, with the help of a project. So the goal is we have to build, train, test, and deploy a machine learning re regression model to predict use car passes based on their features. So here we will use uh, SageMaker notebook and uh, we also have data here and we have some features you can see inputs make model type origin train voice and then size vendor right and so on and the output column is price so on the basis of given features we have to predict the price so these are the inputs right these are the inputs or features and we have to predict the vehicle price Right, so this is our target column. So all these features we can pass into our ML model, right? And we will get the predicted output. So our data will look like this, right? So these are the columns that we have, right? And this MSRP, this is our target column. So multiple linear regression examine the relationship between more than two variables. And in the case of simple linear regression, we have covered that uh, we had only one feature, but here uh, we will have more than one feature. Each independent variable has its own corresponding coefficient. So we will use this equation while making a prediction on a test sample. We can evaluate model performance on the basis of a loss function. So as we have seen in the last session, uh, we can use loss function, mean squared error, right, to just the uh, model performance on the given data set. So let's say if we take a uh, engine size as a feature and the car price is the target column. So these are the data points. Okay, now I have shared my screen. Okay. Evaluate model performance. So after training a model, we can evaluate model performance on the basis of some evaluation technique like a mean squared error mean absolute error or ask so the difference between actual value right actual value and the predicted value right that is called residual or error right that is called residual or error so in this image you can see this is our actual data point and here on this line here this is predicted value right and the, and the difference between actual value and the predicted value is called residual then we have another evaluation technique that is r square or coefficient of determination so the coefficient of determination is the number between 0 and 1 means the value of r square we always get between 0 and 1 and that measure how well a statical model predicts an outcome so if you are getting value equal to uh, one or close to one it means our model performing well and if our r square value is close to zero or equal to zero means our model is not performing well 
and uh, sometimes uh, we may get a negative value it means we have a very worst model okay now let's see how we can implement multiple linear regression so we will see how to implement multiple linear regression using scikit-learn and SageMaker algorithm right we will see both techniques so first I'm gonna okay for the first I'm going to teach you how to implement multiple linear regression using scikit-learn so scikit-learn is a machine learning library okay uh, so from sklearn so we need a data so here uh, we will work on a inbuilt data set that is boston data set right which is a housing data set housing price data set so here we will use uh, housing price data set load boston and then we will import a algorithm so the algorithm will be same here uh, from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression next we will import train touch split to, sp uh, to split the data into train and test from sklearn dot model selection import train test split okay or instead of this uh, okay uh, let's implement this on the sage maker right uh, okay so here uh, we will also use the same data right housing data set okay so i'm going to run this again okay so we can import some necessary libraries and we can import the same data right boston data dot csv so this is a housing data set and uh, so uh, here our target column is last one medv column medv this is the target column right so this is a housing data set where we have to predict the price of a house and uh, these are the columns so we want to store our data into a csv file where the first column will be a target column so let me copy this okay uh, copy this column name and paste it here so we can use here pd.concate so first we can pass the column medv which is the target column and then we can pass the rest of the columns here now you can see the first column we have medv which is the target column and rest of the columns we have as the features shape we, uh, we have 14 columns here and the number of samples 404 next we can split the data to train and test okay and uh, next we can save the data into uh, we can save the train data into train underscore data dot csv file and the validation data we can save into valid under, underscore data dot csv file index equal to false means uh, we don't want to save the indexing into the csv file and header equal to false means we don't want to save the column name also next we want to uh, okay i'll show you uh, here we have got the csv files you can see train data dot csv and valid underscore data dot csv now these two files we want to load into this s3 bucket so these two files we want to load into this my data folder okay so sagemaker dot session and uh, so here we can create a session object then we can call upload data method we can pass file name that we want to upload and the bucket name so I think bucket name here we have taken ML house data. So here we have to pass the bucket name ML house data. So ML house data. This is the bucket name. And then uh, uh, we have to pass the subfolder name. That is my data. You can see here subfolder name my data. Fit on this. So you can see this so file has uploaded at this location so s3 bucket name then subfolder name and then file name similarly we can upload our valid data and the bucket name is ml house data and keep fx is my data here that will be same and here you can see both files here we have uploaded successfully right into this my data subfolder next uh, we can retrieve the algorithm right so first we have to import this image underscore 
URIs. So each algorithm in SageMaker we have as a container, right? So uh, as a container image. So we have to import uh, this function here and uh, here, okay. And uh, into this function also we have to mention the reason. So the reason we can access with the help of Boto3 library, Boto3.session.reason name. So Boto3 is a Python library that we can use to access the AWS services, right? So image URIs dot retrieve, then the algorithm name, which is a linear learner, then reason name, okay? Uh, then uh, here we can mention the path where we want to store our trained model. So trained model, uh, first here we have to mention the bucket name that is ML, house data okay, and this is the prefix mesa folder name saved hyphen model and this is the output location right s3 then bucket name then subfolder name and then output if we run this you can see this will be the path now we can initialize our model so sagemaker dot st dot estimator dot estimator then we can pass the container we can pass the role. So role basically we pass to access the S3 bucket, then instance count, instance type. Okay, so under the free tier plan, we can use this instance type, ml.m4.xlarge. And then we can mention the output path where we want to save our trained model. Then we can mention the session object. So sagemaker underscore session equal to SCWS. So this so this variable is an object of SageMaker session class. Next, uh, we can mention here input data channel and validation data channel. So here we have to specify the bucket and also the file name. So SageMaker dot training input S3 underscore data. Here we can mention the path. You can see this is a path here. This is a path of our train data.csv file and this is a path of validation data.csv file and the content type text slash csv your csv file so both are the csv file next we can set the hyperparameters predictor size or uh, sorry a predictor type regressor best size is 20 number of epochs you can also increase this value but here we can uh, here i'm going to take number of epochs equal to two yeah, right otherwise it will take more time for training but uh, uh you can increase this value right number of models 10 and the loss function that here we want to use absolute loss function we can call fit method here we can pass our training data and validation data so in the case of multiple linear re regression you can see what is multiple linear regression so multiple linear regression is a regression model that estimates the relationship between quantitative dependent variable and two or more independent the independent means input variables or features using a straight line so in the case of multiple linear regression we have to build a linear relationship between a target column and two or more independent variables or features. And okay, let me show you the equation. You can see in the case of simple linear regression, we can use this equation. In the case of multiple linear regression, we can use this equation. So y equal to b naught or b0 plus b1 x1, b2 x2 till bn xn. So if we have n features here, we can use this equation. So or b naught or b0, b1, b2, bn, these are the parameters, right? These are the parameters and uh, what is mean squared error okay and this is the formula of mean squared error one by n and is the number of samples summation i equal to one till n and yi means actual output of the ith sample minus predicted output of the ith sample and then we can take the square we have another technique that is r square so if you use this technique so uh, mostly we get the value of this r square between zero and one Okay, uh, you can see this formula r square equal to sum of squared of residual 
and sum of square of total. So here we have, okay, uh, uh, instead of this, I think uh, y hat, yes, this one, one minus then actual output minus predicted output. This is same uh, that we have as a sum of squared error. And then we have y i actual output minus mean, right? Mean of the y. So this is the formula that we can use to find the R square. So R square is an evaluation technique for regression model. Okay, I think our training has completed. Check. It will take uh, some, it will take a few minutes more. Okay, so training has completed. Next, uh, we will create our endpoint. So endpoint, basically we create, okay, uh, suppose if we have a uh, web application, right, to predict something, right? So now uh, here, after training our model, uh, our train model, we want to use for that web application, right? So for that, we can create an endpoint. After that, we can, access our train model on this uh, web application okay so first we have to set the endpoint name so we want to set the endpoint name as linear hyphen rg model than today date and this is how we can create an endpoint so dot deploy then initial instance count instance type endpoint name then we can change uh, okay, then we can set the serializer that will be equal to csv underscore serializer, right? And then we can set the deserializer that will be equal to json underscore deserializer. So after this, if you make any prediction on the test data, we will get the output in the form of dictionary because here uh, we have just set uh, deserializer equal to json underscore deserializer. Okay, here it will take some time. But in cyclic mm -hmm. we also have some other algorithms. Okay, I'll show you how we can work on scikit learn. Okay, so from, okay, so here we have, uh, we already have data into a CSC file. So import pandas as pd and pd dot read CSV. And we can mention the file name that is used car price dot CSV and df equal to this df dot hat okay so this is our data and this msrp uh, this is basically the price okay this is the price of a used car okay. and rest of the columns we have as a features okay so here uh, we want to use scikit-learn algorithm so from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression okay so we also have some other algorithms right like a uh, ridge you can see and a uh, lasso right okay so i'm not going to cover ridge and lasso so both are the advanced algorithms here okay so linear regression so lg equal to Okay, and uh, before this, we have to split the data into data and test. So, uh, before training a model, uh, let's split the data into train and test using train test split function. So, from sklearn dot model selection import train test split. So, train test split, and uh, here we can pass our input data. So input data we can store into variable x, x equal to df dot drop. We can drop our target column, which is target msrp. This is our target column and x is equal to one. And the output we want to here store in the form of array, so dot values. So in y, here we want to store our target column. So df, and then column name m s r p dot values sorry here dot comma dot values 
Now we can pass here x comma y comma test size. Let's take here 2.25 uh, means 25 percent samples you want to use for testing, there are 75 percent samples you want to use for training. So train x train comma x test comma y train comma y test. Okay, uh, so now in X train we have train input, in X test we have test input, in Y train we have train output, in Y test we have test output. So next we can initialize our model, linear regression, then LG dot fit. We can pass our train input data, X train, comma, sorry, not X test, Y train, X train, comma, Y train. Uh, linear regression. Let me check what error we are getting here. Could not convert string. Okay, here we have string columns, so we have to do here uh, one hot encoding. You can see here we have string columns, so we have to do here one hot encoding. Okay, so in pandas we have a class that is get dummies. Pd dot get dummies. So get them is basically used to convert the categorical column into numeric form. Here you can see uh, column make, model, type, region, type, train. So these are the categorical column. So these column uh, we cannot pass directly into a machine learning algorithm. Right? So first we have to convert these column into numeric form. So get them is, uh, okay. Uh, here we can pass the column that we have in categorical form. So column name, make, comma, model, comma, type, comma, origin, comma, type train. This, okay, I, uh, we have to pass a list of list here. You can see we are getting the output here. So one hot encoding we can use to convert the category col column into numeric form. Right? Because if we have any column uh, in which we have categories, so that column we cannot pass directly into our model while training. So we can store the output here into some variable, let's say df2 equal to, right? And uh, then we can fetch the columns that we already have in numeric form. So let's take df3 equal to and uh, df dot select d types. Okay, uh, select df dot uh, df dot i log. Here first we have to drop this column msrp because this is a target column. Okay, so we can uh, skip this column using i log. Select all the values or we can use a drop command, drop this column name, msrp comma x is equal to one, and then select D type. Here we can pass argument include. So we want to use, or we can pass here, exclude equal to object. Means we want to get only numeric columns. Now in, let's see in DF3. So you can see in DF3, we have all numeric columns, right? And uh, one more thing you can see here, uh, we don't have this target column here, right? So these are the features. Now we can perform concatenation between DF2 and DF3. PD dot concat, and uh, here we can pass a list of data frame DF2 comma DF3. And then x is equal to one. Now uh, we can store that data into a variable final, final dot values. Okay, now in x we can store final and uh, this y will be same here. Okay, if we run this again, x train, y train, you can see we are here, we are getting no error. Next, uh, we can find the score or if you want to get R2 score, we can import it from sklearn dot matrices, import R2 score, this one, 
auto score here we can pass uh, and if you want to see the help so if you press shift and tab you will get the detailed documentation about this art score so why true and why print why print means actual output so the actual output we have in i think in y test comma and the predicted output so let's find here also predicted output y print equal to y print equal to lg dot predict and here we can pass x test so what we have got in y print so here we have got continuous values you can see here we have got continuous values so these are the price of cars of used car so this output now we can pass into this auto score so auto score we are getting 0.74 which is not good so if you want to improve this uh, we have several techniques like we can perform feature scaling right? or we can do some other advanced algorithm like ridge lasso right? okay and uh, we have another option like we can also use here deep learning okay right? means or we can do regression using neural network also so these are the ways that we can implement to increase this auto score so this is how oh, okay so oh, this is just a process right to implement multiple linear regression using circuit learn okay now let's go back to the this linear learner okay here we can pass the target column we can drop this so now here you can see in the extras we have thirteen features and now we want to make prediction on this here you can see we uh, here we got the output as json now here uh, we can convert this output into a form of array okay and uh, next we can get some data points from the validation data okay so here in y test we have actual values now we want to get r square so r2 score and we can pass y test actual output comma predicted output so here also our r square is not good means our model is not performing well so you can try with some other algorithms like ridge or lasso okay okay similarly if you want to get mean squared error so this is the mean squared error which is also very high so as i said you can use a rich rich regression so this model uh, basically we use when uh where the independent variables are highly co highly correlated means so uh, where features are highly interdependent to each other right where features are highly interdependent to each other so this is a advanced algorithm that we can use here rich regression rich regression uh basically use a regularization technique that is l2 right l1 and l2 both are the regularization technique right and the regularization we use to reduce the overfitting problem okay right? to reduce the overfitting problem right and what is overfitting so we can say uh, overfitting is a case where our model performing performs well on the train data but not on the test data right our model performs well on the train data but not on the test data right so we can say uh, we have got a overfitting model so overfitting we can use with the help of regularization so if you want to implement regularization either you can use rich regression or you can use lasso so rich implement l2 regularization and lasso implement l1 regularization okay and uh, so you can see this is how we can implement linear learner for more than one features okay uh, okay let's implement here a uh, ridge regression also so if you want to see the loss function in the case of a ridge regression so you will find that uh, the loss function of ridge regression is equal to sum of squared error plus l2 regularization plus l2 regularization 
So rich equation loss function. You can see this or instead of this uh, okay so here you can see this one by n and, and the number of sample summation y i uh, predicted output sorry uh, actual output minus predicted output then square so this is very similar to the sum of squared error and then we have this alpha one by n and it's the number of sample this alpha is basically a regularization parameter and then summation i equal to one till n and then w i is the coefficient so coefficient of i feature here so this is a loss function that we use in the case of rich regression so first we have this thomas squared error then we have l2 regularization so this is the definition of l2 regularization okay let's implement here rich regression and instead of this uh, we want to use rich let's find the predictions using rich model Okay, uh, one more thing here. Okay, let's let me just copy, paste it here. After rd dot fit, in the fit method we can pass x train, comma, y train. Okay, and if we run this, okay, and next uh, we can find the predictions. So y trade one equal to rd dot predict. Here we can pass our x test. Next, we can find here our score and we can pass here y test, comma, y paid one. Oh, here we are getting 0.75. Okay. Uh, so, this alpha, okay, here we can try different value of this alpha. So, this is called hyperparameter training. So, basically, in hyperparameter training, uh, we try to find the optimal value of an hyperparameter. So uh, let's try with alpha equal to 0 0.1. You can see 0.74. Okay, let's try with alpha equal to 10. Point still 0.74. So here we have to try different values. Okay. Uh, one more thing that we can do, we can also implement here feature scaling. So feature scaling means we want to rescale all the feature values into a print, uh, into a fixed range, right? Into a fixed range. Okay. So uh, feature scaling means rescale all the features values into a fixed range. So here we have some techniques in scikit-learn, like we can use a standard scalar. So SQL and dot preprocessing import the standard scalar. Okay, and std equal to the standard scalar. Initialize this and we can call std dot fit fit underscore transform. Uh, we can use for extrain and uh, the output we can store into some variable. Let's say std train equal to and uh, for the test data we can use only transform so feature scaling we use uh, to rescale all the features values into fixed range okay i'll show you the formula here the formula of the standard scalar standard scalar okay so this is the formula of this uh, of this class standard scalar x minus mean divided by standard deviation Right, so this is the formula of a standard scalar class. So in scikit-learn, we have techniques like a standard scalar and normalization. Okay, so standard scalar fit underscore transform test, and uh, here we can pass x test. Now here we can pass std train. Fit on this, and here we can pass std test you can find out if score 0. 0.67 okay let's try with one you can see 0. 0.77 here we have got a score okay 0. 0.01 still same so we have to find the optimal value and that uh, we can do with the help of hyperparameter tuning so hyperparameter tuning i can we can, uh, either we can implement manually or we can use inbuilt class here that is grid search CV. Right? 
So uh, this uh, you will implement by yourself. The class is from sklearn dot. Uh, okay, let me check and import grid search CV. Okay, uh, let me use model selection import git search CV. Okay, this one. So this is a hyperparameter tuning class, right? That we can use to find the optimal value of an hyperparameter. So this you will implement by yourself. Okay. So uh, so far uh, we have seen about multiple linear regression. In the next class, uh, we will see classification using logistic regression. And here in the case of uh, uh, linear learner, we can also do classification using linear learner, right? So in the next session, we will talk about classification, right? Classification using logistic regression in scikit-learn or classification using linear learner. So guys, it is I think, enough for today's session, right? So let's wind up the session and let's meet in the next class. Thank you.